Today I'm going to be talking about getting a state citizen passport. This would be recognition from uh, John Kerry, the Secretary of State of the United States of America, that you are not a United States citizen and instead are a national. And the definition of national is, fine, is found in the INA as a person who owes allegiance to a, a state small s state, not large s state. So the first thing that's interesting when you start looking at this stuff is that if you go to the Secretary of State's website and look up certificates of non-citizen, uh, in there he describes that you can apply for a certificate of non-citizen uh, status and here's a John Kerry, Secretary of State's website's own Certificates of Non-Citizen Nationality. And that he goes through the application and says that uh, instead of issuing Certificates of Non-Citizen Status, he has chosen to issue them in the form of a passport for the um, added plus of not having to deal with fraud mechanisms, i.e., when you have a driver's license, there's so many little things on there that keep it hard to, to copy, right? To make fake IDs out of. So he's chosen to accept um, um, DS-11 passport applications for the status of non-citizenship, non-US citizenship. So I'm gonna show that um, website to you. And if I were you and I was applying for this a state citizen passport, I would bring a copy of it down to the post office, which is the, to me the best place to make the application instead of a passport agency because, you know, post the postal employees tend to be a little less confrontational. And um, I would let them know that it's not so much that you're applying for a passport as you are applying for a certificate of non-U.S. citizen status. And here's the, here's the Secretary of State's own website where it des describes that a national is a person who owes a permanent allegiance to a state. So uh, what good would this be for you? Well, my um, thinking uh, is that basically all the problems that I have and you have and everybody else has comes from the fact that the United States government is getting in your business it's not your state, although the state's pretty evil, but they're just a subsidiary of the United States. In the 1879 Constitution that California passed after the Civil War, and I would never use any Constitution that was passed after the Civil War if you're in a state, and if, you're, if your state was accepted into the Union prior to the Civil War, you use the, you use the Constitutions that were created prior to the Civil War. In the 1879 California Constitution it says clearly that the state of California is an inseparable part of the United States. Well you can't be a separate sovereign nation, right? You can't be California a separate sovereign government if you're inseparable. <laughs> so actually the state that is harming you is basically the United States. It's inseparable. If you want to go back to common law, you better go back to prior to the Civil War. Or you better be able to prove that you're not a US citizen. So you go into the 14th Amendment for the definition of United States citizen, and a United States citizen is any person born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. So when you sign up for a voter registration, you can't get a voter registration unless you claim you're a U.S. citizen. You can't get a bank account unless you claim you're a U.S. citizen. They're going to ask for a social and for you, know, you to check off the box you're a U.S. citizen. Just giving them a social security guarantees you're a U.S. citizen. I mean, when you got a social security card, they asked you to check off the box that you're a U.S. citizen. So. All the things that you have signed in your life that said you are a U.S. citizen because you were mistaken that you were a U.S. citizen are going to come back to haunt you. But 
First of all, I'm not a person, legally speaking, so I can't be a U.S. citizen. And then, in common usage, the term person does not include the sovereign. And statutes employing the phrase are ordinarily construed to exclude it. Wilson versus Omaha Indian Tribe, 442 U.S. 653 in 1979. Second of all, I wasn't born in the United States. When the United States is geographically known as Washington, D.C. and the territories that the United States of America owns. 7, 7 U.S.C. definition, the term United States means the several states and territories of the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. The term state includes a territory and the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. Okay, so Guam, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and American Samoa. Washington, D.C. in and the territories is the United States and nothing else. Now, the several states united, you can call all the, all the states together these United States. But I don't know that you can call it the United States. <laughs> that would indicate it's one thing. There are actually four known or commonly known definitions for the United States. So the term itself is vague and ambiguous because it doesn't describe one thing. The United States is a corporation. The United States is the, the union of the several states. The United States is a, is a sovereign power when it deals with foreign entities like England and France. But anyway, you can look at you can look at a whole bunch of definitions for state citizen versus US citizen and there are a number of court cases where they actually come out and say you can be a state citizen without being a United States citizen. By metaphysical refinement what the hell does that mean? In examining our form of government, it might be correctly said that there is no such thing as a citizen of the United States. Yeah, because nobody's born in Washington, D.C., and that's the place where the United States is the United States, unless you're talking about the separate states. A citizen of any one of the states, now here we have capital S states, of the Union is held to be and called a citizen, lowercase c, of the United States, although technically and abstractly there is no such thing. There's no such thing as a citizen of the, a citizen of the United States and I'm not a US citizen. What I am is a Californian. That is defined in the Federal Style Manual, Section 5.23, Title 8, Sections 1101A21. Also, everybody get your paper and pencil handy, because I got a few things I want you to write. And um, there was one that says there is no such thing as a United States citizen. Because unless you were born in Washington, D.C., and then I don't know that you could be a citizen of the United States if you're claiming that Washington, D.C. is the United States. So anyway, I think it's a good thing to research this, and I'm thinking that it's a good thing to have a state citizen passport. So, if you're interested in getting this recognition, then you can apply for a certificate of non-citizen status through the passport, going to the post office, and when you go down there, you're going to have to fill out a DS-11. One good place for information on this is coppermoonshinestills.com and he actually shows his DS-11 filled out in such a way that you will receive a passport or passport card as a state citizen. And then you can ask John Kerry to provide certified evidence of your passport application and he will give you a certified um, certified documents showing your DS-11 application plus anything else you attach to it as exhibits. Now when you go down and apply you are not going to be able to modify the DS-11 in any way. You can't cross words out, you can't add words in, but what you can do is attach exhibits that explain what you mean. 
So I, I'm big on affidavits, and I would just attach an affidavit that outlines the fact that you're not a 14th Amendment citizen of the United States because you're not a person, you weren't born in Washington, D.C., and you're not subject to the jurisdiction of the United States when you are on California soil or the land known as California or known as Texas or known as Pennsylvania, whatever. You can't be. And I'm relying on the government's own codes and laws and constitutions to support and Supreme Court cases and, and uh, other court cases for the information that allows me to say that I'm not a United States citizen, I'm a state citizen. And as a state citizen, not subject to the Patriot Act, the NDAA, Obamacare, or whatever else the Congress wants to pass. So you're going to go down to the post office, you're going to have to fill out the DS-11. And I can tell you from experience that they are not going to accept any name that you're going to put on there other than the birth certificate name. So you can forget adding sui juris or putting a colon in or changing it to the house of whatever your last name is or the family of whatever your last name is. Don't do any of those things on the passport application. If it's the first time you've ever applied for a passport, you are going to have to provide a certified copy of your birth certificate to go along with it. That's your right, you know, you have to show that you were born in California or whatever state you were born in. Second of all, you're going to have to show, you're going to have to claim on there that both you are not a citizen and your parents were born in states and not born in Washington, D.C., and therefore are not U.S. citizens also. You're going to mark there off that they were state citizens. You're not going to call them state citizens. You're just going to say, were they United States citizens? No. <laughs> then, uh, you know, to me, it's kind of like this. It was a mistake if I filled out a, a voter registration before and said I was a U.S. citizen, or it was a mistake if I got a, a Social Security card and said I was a United States citizen, because just because I've sworn 10 times in my life that I'm pregnant, I'm a man, men can't get pregnant. If I swear that I'm pregnant, does that make it true? No. Is it an impossibility? Yes. Therefore, it's an impossibility that I ever was a United States citizen because I was never born in the United States. I was never subject to the jurisdiction because I'm in a state and the United States has no jurisdiction in that state over me. And it has no jurisdiction in that state. Unless we're talking about the property is owned by the United States of America and the state ceded jurisdiction to the United States of America to rule over that land, like a military fort or the post office or the, the federal court. Maybe they gave the property to the federal government. Anyway, I think it's worthwhile researching this information and, you know, best of luck to getting your passport. If you're going to go down there and you have no state-issued ID, if you do have it, great. If you don't have any, then you are going to need to fill out, have somebody come down there with you that's known you for more than two years, that does have state-issued ID, and is willing to fill out an affidavit form DS-71. Okay, here's going to be the Form 71 Affidavit of Identifying Witness. If you don't have any state-issued ID, they say that you can use an Affidavit of Identifying Witness to support your claim of the name being correct and who you are. And there's, there's only one witness form here, and you have to sign, you have to swear this is all true in front of the postal employee. So you don't sign this until you go down there, but you could fill it in and the name of the person who's applying, what your relationship to them is, your friend or wife or whatever, how long you've known them, all this stuff, you just fill it out as true and correct. The only thing I did different was I took a black pen and underlined the word national because I'm claiming I'm a national, right? I mean, the person who's as your witness. Now, if they're not 
if they don't care about claiming that they're a national, if they're not applying for the passport with you or something, then they can just fill it out as as um, whatever they want. They don't have to be a national. Um, the other thing is they're going to have to have ID. They're going to have to have a driver's license or some state-issued ID before they're going to accept that they can be a witness for you. Now, it's going to be better for you if you do have state-issued ID. Once you get the passport, you can always cancel the ID because at that point, what better ID can you have than the Secretary of State of the United States issued card, a passport card, with your picture and name on it. That is your ID afterwards. The passport card. If you want to go to a foreign country like Europe or Asia, then you're going to need to get an actual passport. The passport card costs like $40, $45, and the passport is 100 and when you get the two of them together, it's like $145. So, you can get the passport and the passport card and just carry around the passport card with you and you should have no problem getting on a plane or whatever as long as you're not going to a foreign country that's too far away, right? The passport card um, would be good enough to be able to, to move around driving, right? Only you're not really driving, you're traveling. So. Um, you can choose to get a passport card or get a passport and a card or just get a passport, whichever you want. After you get this approved and, you know, probably you are going to get called and challenged on the fact that you're incorrect in stating that you are a, not a United States citizen and everybody born in any state is a resident of that state and of the United States and all that stuff. But all you can do is, you know, know the information I put on my passport application, I swore was true and correct, and I stand by it based on the information that I have, right? I can only go by what my research has turned up, and this is my research. And if you can show me where the cases that I cited were not true, and that they didn't say those things in there, or, you know, where the United States is... Uh, you know, when, when I def defined it under Title 26 as the United States, geographically speaking, means Washington, D.C. and the territories, if you want to state that that's not true, <laughs> you can show me that they lied in Title 26 when they said that. Okay, I want to see it. But I want to see something more than just your opinion. The postman can't make any legal determination, so he can't tell you that you can't say this and you can't say that. That would be him making a legal determination. You're free to, to make any determination you want. But if they get sticky and they refuse, just leave. Go to another post office. There'll be multiple post offices around you that take passport application and after you know, if you're if you're nice and you try to present it in the way, I would go down there with the Secretary of State's website print off showing that they give certificates of non-citizen status and that that's what you're applying for, right? It's not a regular passport application. And that would be different for them, I'm sure. Once in a while, maybe they're going to have seen that before. But anyway, you just um, walk out and then go to a different pass, uh, different post office and apply there. And at some point, somebody will accept it. When you do get it accepted, pay for it with a postal money order. Bring cash, pay with the money order. Don't, you know, tie a bank account to your application where your bank account's going to have a social and all that stuff. Why go there? Why create, you know, a headache when you can just bring cash and pay with a postal money order? Uh, you can learn more from Kelby Smith here, and if you go to his website on YouTube and listen to what he has to say about the state citizen stuff. Uh, I didn't use Kelby as my mentor. I used someone else, and the man I had helped me fill out the form was invaluable, in my opinion, to me in getting what I wanted. I have gotten a passport issued to me, and on the um, application, the attached um, affidavit, I clearly state that I'm not a U.S. citizen, so now I've got evidence of that. So I hope this information has been useful for you, and um, thank you for watching, as always.